<laughs> All right, buddy. It's time to get up. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so excited to get back home. What about you, buddy? We say first thing on the agenda today, we take all that clean clothes and we put them in the closet. Hey, what do you say? When I'm in the van, I find I use my feet <laughs> to help with uh, folding bigger items. We don't have the roof space to stand and do it. So I use my feet to make it longer. You're so freaking cute, crazy. Cruz is being playful this morning. That's unlike him. Normally he's a big grump in the morning for like at least the first hour and some. Unless somebody else is around, then he's super stoked. Hey Cruz, are you excited we're moving back in? Looks like it. All right, backup set of bedding. I carry two backup sets of bedding in the van. Um, these ones, because I like the, the coolness of it on on the body at night. And also I carry a flannel set with me, just in case we get some cold nights. Excuse me, sir. Oh, oh sorry, buddy. Daddy's gonna get in your way here. I had to fold some shirts, pal. I use the shirt folder just because it keeps everything the exact size in my cabinets. Perfectly folded. And they actually fit the exact depth of these cupboards up here. Look, like a perfect fit. And then I use this thing as my divider right in the middle. I oddly feel like I'm showing you guys my van for the very first time. I feel like I'm showing myself the van for the very first time. It's been so weird to be out of this thing. All right, that goes in between. Done deal. I definitely carry a lot of clothes in my van. That's for sure. These two cabinets are literally just clothes. Oh yeah, back there, that whole thing goes all the way down that's all just hoodies and light jackets right now we can take all this stuff down all the dirty work up there is done Starting to feel official. <laughs> Things in here are way more organized than what they once were. I don't remember my van looking this this good. Probably for the last three years since I used to make this one my tequila drawer. Used to pull this drawer open. Now it's my socks and underwear. I had all my tequila bottles and shot glasses and drink glasses in this little nicely cut out foam, but you know, I, I found I didn't really use the drawer that often. So I made it my socks and underwear drawer. And this one here will probably get really, really bad once we get on the road, because you buy extra spices, they end up getting chucked in this drawer. But I bought myself some really cool plates and bowls that I'm oddly stoked about. Over the years, I've been always using these, I think they're ceramic coated stainless steel camping pans or camping plates and bowls. And they never really lasted that long. And I bought them because I thought, hey, these are the items that last, you know, getting beat up in the campgrounds and stuff. But they never did. They always had this uh, speckled coating on it and a chrome rim around the outside edge. And what I found is that the chrome rim on the outside edge 
would get corrosion underneath it and then the rim would pop off and stuff would get stuck in there. They were actually quite gross. So I found these ones on Amazon the other day and they are the thickest plates I've ever owned. They feel, you can't even bend these things. They're incredible. So I just wanted to share with you guys, the company's called Red Co, R-E-D-C-O dot. Found them on Amazon and they came in a set of four. They were not cheap, but damn, man, I think these are the ones that are going to last uh, last the long haul. Stick around and find out. They also make bowls as well too, but they don't make red bowls. So I bought these cool little speckled ones, but they're so thick. Like they feel like something like your grandma would have had from way back in the day that lasted her the entire lifetime. So yeah, I'm stoked on these. They made cups, but the cups aren't as thick. This is no different than any other cup you would buy, but yeah, I was hoping that they'd be as equally as thick as the plates and bowls, but they weren't. Look how thick they are. That's legit. Like they're, they're awesome. So yeah, if you guys are looking for something for your van, I think those are pretty darn cool. Watch them fall apart on me next week, but <laughs> I'll let you know if they do. Should have did this before I <laughs> before I made the bed. Cruz, you're gonna have to move, buddy. Dad needs in here. Beep beep, bro. Oh, big stretch. This is something I do every about six months or so. And I figure we should probably do this before we take the van out on the road. And that's make sure my batteries are secure. So on each corner underneath my bed. I've got two SOK batteries. So there's two 100 amp hours here and two 100 amp hours on the other side. Just wanna make sure that these posts are nice and tight. Good to go. Everything back here is nice and tight. on the front is to finish off the hood put on the great big front bumper get the winch in there <laughs> then this project is this close to being well we have a bit of a hiccup but this close to being done all right let's check on my battery setup it's okay we're at a hundred percent baby the cells look good, so you can see all the cells at the bottom, so you can see if there's anything going on with them internally. Cells look good, everything looks great. So if one battery says that, they all should say pretty close to the same. Let's go driver's side, and battery number 99. Bada boom! We're good to go. Let's check the other one, let's do driver 97. Oh, yeah, we're good to go. And we'll go passenger 27. Batteries look good. I loved those SOK batteries so much when I put them in my van a few years ago that I became a dealer distributor for them here in Canada and a dealer for them in the USA. And they emailed me the other day, and there is one heck of a sale on those batteries. If you've been looking for picking up batteries for your rig or planning for your van life in the future, holy freaking cow. These prices are absolutely bonkers and I just have to tell you guys about them today because missing out on this would just be, <laughs> just be a bad idea. This is the 206 amp hour metal case battery. It's got a built-in Bluetooth, built-in heater, so it's good for winter use. But the metal case ones are for dry applications only. So use these ones inside your camper vans, not in your boxes on the outside of your RVs or in your boats. This one's perfect for van life. These ones, regular, $1,200 USD, on right now for $649 USD. That is freaking bonkers. And this is the smaller version of this one, built-in heater, built-in Bluetooth, just like you've seen on mine. 
These ones are selling for $430 USD, regular $630. This one is the smoke and deal right now. Awesome. And as a footprint, comparative to the 100 amp hour, it's not that bad. It's mainly taller and a little bit wider, but come on, man, like $630 for an SOK, that's bonkers. So if you're interested in adding some of these to your van, email me at chrome at vancityvanlife.ca and we will get these shipped out to you while the prices are where they're at. It's just bonkers, man. Like I paid way more than that for the ones that are in my van. So these are the ones that I have in my van, but I have the plastic case version ones. There's no difference except for the plastic ones are, uh, have a sealed lid, so they're good for boats and things like that. But the underside of my bed's never going to get wet, so um, the metal case ones are perfect for this application. And at that price, you can't complain. And if you also are in the market here in Canada for them, also email me as well, chrome at vancityvanlife.ca. And I know there's a lot of demand right now for the 206 amp hour one in the plastic marine grade case heated with the Bluetooth. There is none of them available anywhere in the USA. Canada wiped out. That's it. Even the factory has sending people to my email to buy them because I'm the only one. I have 32 of the plastic case marine grade ones in stock here in Canada. Email me. I'll give you a price on them. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, guys, this new Van Toys store has got me so amped up that... Uh, we can do this stuff with you guys now. So if you guys are interested, hit me up on an email, okay? Check out the outcome on the new front grill. Man, it looks like I just bought the thing instead of sanding down my original beat up one. Yeah, we just sprayed it with a bed liner. There's a few odd little chunks here and there, but man, did that ever turn out awesome. So I debated on multiple different emblems for the front. I even bought like a big Punisher one because I thought it would look cool now that my van's got a bit more of an aggressive look to it. But I had a subscriber reach out to me and said that they were mailing me a black one that fits here. They found it on eBay. So I guess they're mailing it over to me, which is awesome. So I can pop the black on black logo. So good. But I'm glad I sprayed it, man. Um, we'll see if it lasts. I scuffed it down really well. I used a, what's that stuff called? I used a adhesion promoter for plastic because this is plastic. And then I sprayed the bed liner over top and it feels feels pretty good. But we'll, we'll see if it handles the branches because you know me, <laughs> I'm a little rough on this big beast. Can't wait to get this thing out on the road. Oh yeah. This thing has changed a lot since the day I parked it. It's turned into a whole, <laughs> whole new vehicle. And underneath here, it's got a whole new plastic liner. I should probably take the little <laughs> label off. But yeah, everything is all new underneath these fenders as well too. Things are looking mighty awesome. Okay, let's unlatch this thing and see if the hood lines up. All right, this fender's got to go out a little bit. This fender looks okay. This one's not hasn't been screwed down yet, so we can secure that one. This one is a little tight on this side. So we're gonna have to unscrew it and just pull it out just a little bit. Who's that? 
I hear something noisy. Hey, -o. look who that is. And look who heard a diesel engine pull up. Hey, who's here, bro? You want to go see Lauren? You want to go see Lauren? <laughs> look at his little tail. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Cruzy. Hey, buddy. So what time is the mechanic showing up? What time? I don't even know what time is it. It's a retirement time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. Where are you? Good to see you. <laughs> you too, man. So how was the trip up uh, the island yesterday? Good, but not good. What? What? The piece for the radiator. Yeah. No, no dice. Because when I grabbed the hose and I was trying to cut it and it wouldn't cut, so I just pulled on it. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah. So, yeah. That's okay. No, that's good. This is, this is no problem. You know. That's and um, I, I, drove, I didn't get back last night till like eight o'clock. I drove around all over the place looking for airline, the little connectors for the airline ones. I couldn't find them anywhere. Yeah. So I took to Amazon. They'll well, be here tomorrow. This? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. How's the wood? It's good. Lined up. I, I moved everything this morning. I moved this. This side had to go out a little bit. Yeah. But I lined her all up this morning. Looks good. Oh, man. It looks so good, eh? Yeah. Oh, it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's crazy because it looks like I painted this van. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. just a little cleanup, a bunch of brand new parts. Oh, yeah. That that cleaning that you did, uh, I don't know what you used. but I, It's just a foaming It's thing? just a glass cleaner. I got yeah. it at Superstore. Yeah, that works. Like, yeah. Amazing, eh? Yeah, it's good. Out of all the beating I've done to this thing, it still, still looks beautiful. Oh man, this is the best paint you can put in a, if you want to go in the back country and beat it up in yeah. the bush. Big time. Nothing beats this. So we ran into quite a big hiccup for finishing this thing off. The tuner guy, I gave him access remotely to my computer and he was working within the system on here. And he was like, something's not right. Why is it not reading it? And then he ended up calling me back and saying, hey, you know, the Ford Econoline van is not supported in the HP tuner. He's like, whoever sold you this didn't know what they were doing. So here's the story. The guy at the Ford warehouse in the States, I don't know if it was the Detroit warehouse, wherever he was from, said to use the HP tuner because he's done this conversion before from the 4.6 to the 5.4 in Mustangs, it's a regular conversion. So he says, you need the HP tuner. So by the time this thing landed here, it was well over 600 bucks Canadian. And I can't return this because, well, it's been open and we ran stuff through it. So this one's just gonna sit on the shelf and maybe we'll buy something one day that can take the HP tuner. But the guy said the Econoline 250 series or, or the Econoline series is not supported in the HP tuner. He said the HP tuner is one of the best tuners out there. They use them all the time. And uh, so now we're back at square one. He's contacting another tuner company, SC something, STC or whatever the name of it is, on Monday for us to see if their systems support the Econo lines. He said they should because most of the Ford stuff that he does goes through that other tuner. So he's going to find out for me Monday if they support the Ford Econo lines. If that's the case, I have to buy another tuner from him. He'll ship it out to me from Alberta. Then that will go in here. That tuner is a little different. That one slides right into the computer itself. It's a little chip that plugs in the back and he programs, programs it all. It slides in the back and that's it. Then we can access the tunes from a little, from a little remote system according to the pictures that he showed. So we're back at square one. <laughs> That thing doesn't have the tunes it needs to run optimally, but we did get approval from the tuner guy saying that, according to the, the scan that he did, that the fuel looks in the lower side of the parameters, but it's still in the acceptable range, so I can still drive this. So we can drive this up and get the wheel alignment or anything little that we need to do, but not to drive it until the tuner is here. So I'll have a more of an update on that on Monday. This thing also goes in for a wheel alignment on Monday. So that's where we're sitting at right now. All because of this HP, baby. little bugger. Yeah. But what the guy says, this is one of the one of the one of his favorite tuners. So but we got it doesn't work for anything we do here. Yeah. We we're all a conal line around this joint. Alright, you guys, that's all I got. 
Me and Lauren are going to tinker around here and maybe get that bumper on here today. But you guys will have to watch that on tomorrow's video. So um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.